to the latest video and in this video newsletter the subject we're going to cover today is why lean will always win here's the title lean will always win now the video has been motivated by a posting on LinkedIn so uh, a gentleman by the name of Phil Mottram so you can look Phil up has started posting little um, video newsletters on LinkedIn I think he started his own business Phil works in the service sector and he posted this video you can see him here and he's saying three ways in which lean is dying now to be fair to Phil he's talking about the service sector I work in the manufacturing sector and the minute he posted that I sent him a little message and I said Phil I completely disagree with you but you've inspired me to make a video because I need to explain why it's not easy to explain why now although Phil's video has triggered me to to make this video to be honest this is a this is a, a, a thought process that has been coming for a while. There is nothing better than having to debate with someone the strengths and weaknesses of a particular approach to improving a business process. Whether it's lean, whether it's Six Sigma, whether it's statistical process control, whether it's using a pull system, whether it's using level loading, whatever it happens to be, there is nothing that hones your ability to understand more than having to debate someone, having to take the challenge on the chin and say, no, actually, I disagree with you, and here's why I disagree with you. So although Phil's video is the thing that's motivated me to come to this point, I've been kind of honing my, my debate on Lean for some time, especially around people who say, uh, Toyota aren't all that good, they're old at, they're going to get beaten by Tesla and all sorts of weird and wonderful uh, statements that get made. We need to understand lean will always win. And so this video is going to explain why that is the case. So the first thing to say, I suppose, is that um, one of the things about lean, everybody gets obsessed with the tools. So what have we got in the toolkit? You know, just off the top of my head, I don't know. Level loading. 5S. SMED. Single minute exchange of dies. What else we got in there? Uh, we've got TPM. We've got mistake proofing. We've got visual management. Pull. And then, of course, we get into the Japanese words. This is the other thing we get obsessed with. We've got obsessed with the Japanese words. What have we got in the Japanese words? Oh, let's... Let's have a list. Oh, Kanban. Kaizen. Um, okay, okay. I don't even know if I'm spelling any of these correctly. I think that's an A and that's an E on the end of that one. Uh, Muda. Muri. Mura. Hijunker. Uh, Jidoka. I'm sure you can add a few yourself. Um, are there any others that I've missed? But we get obsessed. So we get obsessed with the tools. And by getting obsessed with the tool, what we miss is the principle. Because the basic centerpiece of all these tools is that they're all doing exactly the same thing and because people don't understand what that principle is 
People use 5S to clean up, for God's sake. What is that about when 5S is about making bucket loads of money? They do SMED not to reduce batch sizes, but to increase productivity. They don't understand what these things are for. Oh, I forgot the, of course, the one thing I forgot. Don't forget the seven wastes. Everybody's obsessed with the seven wastes. So because you've got these tools and these ideas, everybody just, oh yeah, we're doing TPM, oh yeah, we're doing 5S. Oh yeah, we put some mistake proof in. Oh yeah, we got some, we got some pull systems and some Kanban. Yeah, and everybody's kind of just doing the tools, but they're missing the main principle because what lean is about, if it's done correctly, and by the way, this is what Toyota are doing. This is why they're gonna, they smash everybody to pieces. Lean equals process. It equals process physics. All of these tools correctly applied are affecting the process physics. So Phil, I said I would make this video for you and I would then tell you that I've made it. So Phil, even in the service sector, by the way, this, this process physics still appears. I'm gonna make this video from a manufacturing perspective, but in the service industry, the flow of a process is at the mercy of process physics. And when these tools are done correctly, they control process physics. So if anybody ever says, lean is dying, lean is old hat, what comes after lean, that type of thing, I'm thinking, that's like saying E equals MC squared. Ah, that Einstein guy. It's a hundred years since he come up with that nonsense. It's old hat, isn't it? It's process physics. Unless you can change this, lean will always win. So, what is the process physics that's at the heart of all of these tools if you use them correctly? And if you don't understand this, you don't use them correctly. And it's this. Let me show you a manufacturing process. Machine A. Machine A is going to feed machine B which is going to feed machine C, or department. This could be a department. Department A is feeding department B, which is feeding department C. You take it as a machine, or you take it as a department. This particular process, on average, produces, we'll call it three and a half tons, okay? It produces three and a half tons a week. This particular process produces three and a half tons a week on average. That's on average. And this one produces three and a half tons a week. This process could produce as little as one ton. It could produce as much as six. So could this one so could this one but it is a perfectly balanced process three and a half tons on average three and a half tons on average three and a half tons on average so here's the question process physics what comes out this end you have a perfectly balanced process therefore what everybody says is what comes out of there is 3.5 tons. That is simply nonsense. The process physics mean the variability here destroys this balance and probably you will get, the real figure is probably nearer two and a half, something like that. So you lose. 
What are you losing here? You're losing about 30% of your line balance. 30% of your efficiency goes down the drain because of the variability. Now, if you don't believe this, you can do this with a simple dice. That's why I picked these numbers. The average on a dice is three and a half. The variability is one to six. Put a little bit of stock, maybe one piece here in between the parts. Run the dice. So if you, if you get two on the dice, you end up with three in stock here. And process material in this direction and see what you get out the end on average. You can do this, you can try this yourself. It's perfectly provable. And by the way, I didn't invent this little game. It's from The Goal. Anybody who's read The Goal, it is the best business book ever written. And so if you wanna learn bucket loads about process physics, read The Goal. In chapter 14, he plays a little game with the dice and he plots all the losses. Look at the way the diagram is, is going. The diagram goes down and down and down because the losses just accumulate even though you have a perfectly balanced system. What destroys the throughput is variability. So if you took another dice, for instance, and it was a dice that was one to 10 or one to 12, you can even get 20 sided dice, one to 20. Try playing this game where you process material through a manufacturing plant with more and more variability. The losses will be biggest where the variability is at the maximum. It's process physics. Now, what, are, what is lean doing at its heart? Well, here's what it does. Every single one of these tools is removing process variability. And if you follow the rules properly, it is literally disciplined, repetitive rules over and over again. There is no skill involved in managing your process. There is only following the rules. You eliminate as much variability as you can. And as you do that, you destroy the seven wastes. Because by the way, the, the way to make this process three and a half is to put bucket loads of stock here. Loads and loads of stock in between each process. In other words, put seven wastes in. And the way to get rid of the seven wastes is to create a dice that doesn't produce one to six as a variable. It produces maybe between three and four as a variable. Create a dice that does that and then see how much you, you process. By the way, that's got an average of three and a half. That's got an average of three and a half. Which one will produce the most? This one. It's got the least amount of variability. It's process physics. For those of you that don't believe me, go try it. Go play the game in the goal. So let's talk about what these lean tools do. Look at what they do. Number one, level loading. What are we doing? We're taking the variability out of the plan. So one of the things level loading asks you to do there are different ways to do it, but typically one of the things it's asking you to do is make the average demand. So you've got demand coming in from your customers. It's doing this. What Lean says is ignore that. Make the average. Do this. Remove the one to six. Do this, because this is real by the way, this variability in manufacturing is real. Why does it happen? Well, A varies because of the plan. It varies because of um, machine maintenance. So maybe the machine's down. 
it varies due to skill. Some technicians are better at setting the machine up and speed it up, and some technicians are not, and they slow it down. What else? Um, uh, ooh. Uh, it varies because maybe the, the layout's changing, it's not fixed. Um, what else could it, it vary? Oh, again, maybe the setup. Sometimes the setups are really quick, sometimes the setups are really long. So all of this variability is kind of it's kind of locked into A, it's locked into B, it's locked into C. Now what do the tools do? So number one, we we make the average demand. We take all the variability out of the plan. It's a rule, it's fixed, it's a certain amount, it's a fixed amount. This is this is a religion, not a, a concept, if you like. So you make the average demand, and it means you don't move it around. You don't change it every week. You don't change it every month. And you certainly never change the plan every day. What else do we do? 5S, what does this do? It sets work standards. It sets the layout, it sets the settings on the machine. It visualizes, it visualizes those standards it puts them at the point of activity, so they are easiest to see, easiest to use. In other words, we are beginning to standardize skill. We are beginning to standardize settings on the machine. Fixed layout, fixed settings, fixed. What are we gonna do? We are gonna control process physics. We are gonna remove the variability. The more we remove the variability, the more we can remove the seven wastes. SMED, what does it do? Well, it shortens the batch size. What does shortening the batch size do? Smooths the variability, because instead of doing a big batch, then nothing, then a big batch, then nothing, you can constantly feed the flow of the process with tiny little runs, removing the variability. That's what it does. TPM, what does it do? It keeps your machine good as new. That's what it does. In other words, it removes the variability of the condition of the plant. Removes the variability, removes the variability, removes the variability, removes the variability. Mistake proofing. It means you use standard settings always. Operators can't make up new ways of running bits of equipment, new ways of doing jobs. You lock them out and you make sure the job only has one way to go, one way that you can do the task. Mistake proofing, removes variability, visual management, what does it do? Well, he puts standards at the point of activity. It uh, um, signals abnormalities very quickly. So if an operator starts doing something they shouldn't, visual management will help you to spot it. But because you have visual management, the operator always knows what to do. They always know what the rules are. And every operator knows all the rules and follows them. Fixed, fixed rules. Pull. What does pull do? Well, it takes variability out. It has a fixed maximum. There is a fixed minimum. And there is a fixed order quantity. Most of the people I go to see, they say we do this. They have a variable maximum, a variable minimum, and a variable order quantity. You are not doing pull at all because you are not removing variability. You don't understand your process physics and therefore you are making an half assed attempt at using these tools. You use 5S to clean up because you don't understand process physics and you make an half assed attempt at 5S. You don't use level loading because you don't understand process physics. 
and therefore you leave it to the skill of your planner to change the plan every single day. How can that be a good idea? Lean understands process physics. It fixes all the variability. Every tool does this. One of these, and I think it's, I think it's Mura, is variability. So this is, they, they actually call it um, unevenness, the Japanese. And they say the first job is to remove the unevenness. Lean is about removing variability. So when you go to this process here, that plus that plus that equals that. You get the most out of a system with the minimum amount of variability. And that's the process physics that the great lean companies know. Nobody talks about it. It's sort of built into what's going on. Everybody else is making a complete horlix of lean because they think it's a set of tools, but they don't understand the one principle that drives their process physics. Now, you can do this in a manufacturing company, but you can do this in a service company. Variability, step to step to step, will destroy your service levels in a service process. Lean is about process physics. And unless you can change that and come up with a new, um, a new principle of physics, you do this right, lean will always win. It's not going anywhere. This is, this is a, these, these numbers here are to do with mathematics. I can't imagine anybody is gonna come up with new mathematics that's going to make a process behave any differently. If you do lean properly, lean will always win. There is no better way to make a process as close to its maximum efficiency as possible. And of course, once you've done this once, you keep evaluating. Your continuous improvement keeps evaluating because of course, maybe your pull system has still got a little bit too much material in it. Maybe your setup reduction, maybe you've gone from an hour down to 30 minutes, but maybe you want to go from 30 minutes down to 20 minutes, from 20 minutes down to 15 minutes. You keep doing this. And by the way, each minute that comes off gets harder and harder to take away. So this is going to be continuous improvement. You're going to look for layouts and standards that work better, that make the job easier to do constantly doing your continuous improvement, driving the seven wastes away by driving the variability away. And that is why lean will always win because variability drives your process physics. That is what lean is up to. If anybody wants to send me a comment and say, I think differently, I think this, I think Scrum's better, I think Agile's better, I think AI is going to beat all of this. Oh wow, AI. I'm sure that's going to invent some new physics. If you've got a point of view folks, drop me a line. But as far as I'm concerned, Lean will always win because it's based on process physics. It's based on mathematics. Please understand it. Tell all your customers, tell all your clients, tell your, man your senior management and get your processes to be absolutely world class. Minimum variability, maximum lean tools, and you'll make a bucket load of cash.